Hi, welcome back to the channel, Michelle, and today I'm going to be sharing the end of the year review for my seven-year-old. So she spent the year doing first, mostly second grade level work, so I'm going to take you through and show you how things went. And spoiler alert, everything went really well. Everything we planned to do, we did. And we even added some things towards the end of the year additionally, which I'm going to show you. But I think it's important to say that because I think a lot of these end of the year review videos I've been watching, at least lately, is we didn't do half the things we had planned or we dropped all of these things. And there are times when you have to switch curriculum. I do believe that's true. But I also wanted to make it kind of more of a normalcy to make a plan, stick to that plan, and accomplish the things you wanted to and the benefit your children see from that. That's also normal in homeschooling as well. So let's get into her areas. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is math. So she finished up Dimensions 1A and Dimensions 1B. I keep the test booklets as part of her portfolio. I'll link up above, you know, how I do portfolios. But I've gotten rid of the text textbook and workbook because she's written in those. She finished 1A and 1B, and she is currently in 2A. So we are on chapter three here. And she is flying through this, if I'm gonna be completely honest. And it's funny because this is where I started my oldest child when I brought her home for third grade. This is our third year of homeschooling. So this is where I started with dimensions. And it's interesting to go back because I remember vividly doing this with my oldest and my kids are very different where math comes more naturally to my daughter, my middle child than my oldest, that she's flying through it. Sometimes when I am helping one of my other kids during homeschooling and she's got the textbook or workbook in front of her, she'll do it without me giving her instruction. I still go through and then I give her the instruction because I think direct instruction is very important in math, but also when they're younger and it's very easy to think they understand the concept, but really you have to go through it as the teacher. So she's flying through this and it's actually pretty great to go through this level and I've already taught all of this before, so I don't have to reference the teacher guide very much. I can just go with it and she's, she's really quick with it. One thing we added to it, and not because it needed supplementation, at least not for this child, my oldest needed some review supplementation to cement some things. I was noticed my oldest was making um, simple mathematical errors, which I needed to address, and that was just retention. I needed to review the concepts more than Dimensions was doing it. For my seven-year-old, I don't need to do that, but I purchased Math Mammoth first through seventh grade, the review units. So she's been doing those, and I just print them out every week, and she loves them. She's a kid that loves math, that loves puzzles, and she'll sit there and do a couple pages. I usually print a week's worth of pages, so she'll usually do one page a week. If I leave her alone when I'm helping my oldest or my younger child with something, she'll do multiple pages. So she really does enjoy math. And I do like how the review series for Math Mammoth, math, math Mammoth has been working for her. Again, not necessary, but she enjoys it. I do think it probably is helping to cement some of the things she's been learning, the retention wise. And it's very presented in a puzzle-like format, which she really enjoys. So math, Great, she's doing well with it. We're gonna continue on. Not much to say about that, except she's flying through it. Next, we're gonna go into language arts. So this is more the area she struggles with. So we are still in the you know learning to read phase. So she finished all about level two. She's currently in level three, and it's been going well. She is a child that she was recently diagnosed this past year with ADHD. Focusing is really hard with reading, and she does have issues with retention and working memory when it comes to phonics. So learning more about how her brain works, different techniques and tools to really help her be as successful as she can be. You know, changing curriculum isn't always the answer. Sometimes you as the teacher need to dive deep and learn, learn about your specific child. Whether they have a separate need, like for example, ADHD and having to adjust my teaching techniques to that and learning just more about how the ADHD brain works. Something I will mention that we did this past year really quick is this Thriving with ADHD workbook for kids. This was really helpful in helping identify some goals and executive functioning skills 
that again she's seven so she's young but she does forget things a lot she does she can't do multi-step directions which is pretty common for adhd so this really made her stop and think about okay what's best for my brain because an adhd diagnosis is not is not you know across the board there's different types of adhd there's also kids um, will be different with adhd there's no one fits all so she really needs to self-reflect and figure out what works best for her, which this book really did help with the goal setting of that. And one of the goals she actually set, set towards the end of the book was to read every day. I do not require my kids to read outside of their um, curriculum. And she took it upon herself. She wanted to get better at reading. So she set a goal and then the book helped her kind of um, set up a ladder. So steps to that goal. And she was able to come up with a plan to read every night before bed to help with her reading and it really has helped a lot she has gotten so much better with reading i'm going to show you what some of the things she's been doing so definitely we've been troubleshooting reading this year and again some of that's the adhd some of it's the focus so we've been working on things and some of the things that have really helped is review so we do have the all about reading level cards and i have found that reviewing twice a day is actually better for her so we do have a little bit of review nightly and so after she does her reading before she does her 10 minutes of reading we'll go through these cards really quick and we'll also do her spanish vocab cards at this time and again this is just adjusting to how her brain works she needs more repetitive practice it's not like you got to do 30 minutes every day she needs small increments of repetitive practice for her brain that has really made a difference with her and um her retention with words she's so much more fluid when she reads now so obviously that has helped one thing that has helped is noise canceling headphones so it's really again hard for her to focus when we have two other kids doing homeschool in the house and we do homeschool in separate areas i'll link up above my homeschool spaces and that's just because it works best for my kiddos they get easily distracted my older one doesn't want the younger ones around while she's doing her work she wants to be focused so my seven-year-old especially if she's struggling with focusing we'll put these on and they do have the um it makes that background noise white noise whatever it is it does have that option as well she'll put these on when she's reading it does help kind of drown out the outside noise one of the other things we have been doing that she occasionally uses not all the time is the reading colored strips someone was nice enough to share those with me and she does use those occasionally when she's really struggling but not very much and it's funny because she doesn't even hold the strip the way you think you would hold it she holds it the opposite way with the line going a different way but again uh we call it a snowflake brain you know it's just it's beautiful but it sees things a little differently one thing she's been doing that has really helped is i organized our reading shelf so i did have all of the books all of her readers on a specific shelf so she could easily pull those down and one thing i did was organize them from and again this is one of the books i was reading in i've been doing a lot of reading on myself about how kids learn to read how the brain functions all that one of the suggestions was to um, separate the sections so one of the sections are easy so she can fly through these books it doesn't challenge her really easy next is um where she is right now. So books she can pick up and it's not a struggle. And then we have challenge books in the third section. And these are books where, you know, the rule is you open it up and if you can't say five of the words or read five of the words, that's a challenge book. So we do have challenge books. So sometimes she'll read, you know, five, six, seven easy books, beginning readers. And then she'll read a couple middle grades, so where she is right now. And then occasionally, not often, but occasionally she will read a challenge book. So that has really helped, I think, especially with her ADHD and executive functioning, not having to think about it. She knows this section is easy, this section is middle, this section is hard, and she can pick depending on you know where she feels that day. But even repetitive easy books are helping cement that and her reading has become so much more fluid. Another thing she's been doing is we I've linked up above the easy reader graphic novels. She's been loving that. And these are usually the books she chooses to read at night before bed. So she recently picked up P, B, and J stuck together. So you can see that's kind of where she is with reading. 
And she won't read this in one sitting. This will take, you know, a couple days. But again, she's picking out books. She's doing it on her own terms, which I think really makes a difference because especially if you struggle or it's hard, and having them initiate it, I think is really important. But I also don't think you should ever be in the position where you just, a lot of people will tell you, just wait, you know, they'll get there, it'll come. Sometimes there are things you need to do in order for them to get there, that if you're not making those interventions early on, they're going to struggle a lot more and a lot longer without that aided help. So she didn't just need time, she needed other tools presented by me, the teacher, to really get her there. So she has been doing really well with reading. I'm really happy where she is at this point of the year. We will continue on. All About Reading Level 3 is going really well too. So again, she's getting there and that's great. Having a reader is essential when you're homeschooling. It's like one of those big mile markers when they can read by themselves. It opens up a whole new world. So it is exciting. So speaking of reading, so on Fridays, instead of All About Reading Level lesson, she would read from her Joni Journeys or Trophies books. And these are level first grade readers, I believe. I have a book uh, review on them, I'll link up above. But she's read uh, all of these this year. So again, they, some of them start out super easy and then some of them are uh, longer stories, fiction, nonfiction. I like the mix of books. That way I don't have to buy a bunch of different leveled readers. There's a bunch in there and it goes from easy to difficult, which is great. She can pull those books off the shelf and read as well, but she's done a ton of reading this year, which is great for a child that struggles with reading and a child that was reluctant to pick up a book. Now that she's gotten there, that world is opening, it's a lot more interesting to her. So she's done all of that reading. I'm really proud of her. The next up is for handwriting. She did handwriting without tears finished that all up early on in the year. So I brought in these Harcourt books. I just got these off eBay for a couple bucks. And she finished this entire um, level. Some of it's crossword puzzles. A lot of it's like um, explode the code type thing where you know you fill in the letters. The end did have um, little like fill in the blank test type things, which was good. I think that's important for her to learn how to take a test as well. And uh, reading comprehension has never been an issue with her. And I think that is because we use a lot of um, resources from core knowledge. So although her ability to, her working memory, her ability to hold on to information um, is harder, if she has more contextual knowledge or background knowledge to pull from, it's easier for her brain to make those long-term connections and connect it to something she already knows. So that has really, really helped her. So I'm gonna talk about core knowledge next. I'm gonna take you to my computer for that because it's online. We use All About Reading for phonics reading instruction, but we use core knowledge for background information. So she did the second grade language arts unit. It is divided into two sections, listening and learning and skills. We did not do the skills section. Again, the skills section is a lot of phonics, phonics instructions. The listening and learning strand is contextual knowledge, it's vocabulary elements of the story, that type of stuff. So we did fairy tales and tall tales, early Asian civilizations, ancient Greek civilizations. She really liked that and she really enjoyed Greek myths. The War of 1812. Cycles in nature, westward expansion, insects, the US Civil War. We have already did a full human body unit, unit using all the core knowledge units last year, K through fifth grade, so we did not do this unit. We are finishing up immigration and getting ready to start for, with fighting for a cause, and this will take us into summer. But she has covered all that information on core knowledge. So like I said, she's covered a lot. I don't do a separate science or history curriculum for my seven-year-old because I feel like what we cover in Core Knowledge Language Arts is enough for her at that age. She does join us in our group subjects for science and history, but at a different, you know, she's at a different level than my oldest who's 11. But I do like that we're covering history, we're covering geography, we're covering science in these units. So I wanted to show a couple of the things she's done this year. So when we were doing 
early Asian civilizations. She was doing map work and geography when we were doing doing different science units we were looking at life cycles we were looking at you know the human body she was diagramming the pupil during greek myths she would write kind of a summary of it i would have her do the pictures and then orally she would summarize it because again her writing skills aren't at level to write this type of information kind of a character summary yet but she really enjoyed retelling the greek myths and it's funny because she can pick them out of books we were looking at a book um, at the library and she's like, oh my God, mom, this is about Persephone. And I was like, yes, exactly. So she did some you know, character analysis, character traits, things like that. She got to do some copy and pasting, so retelling the story using pictures. She also did some, um, in the Greek myths, she got to write her own Greek myths. And again, she came up with the information, I scribed it for her. And she came up with her own Greek myth, which was pretty funny, involved a magical unicorn. And right now in immigration, she's also doing some map work as well. So all the puzzle pieces, each section we're covering has a specific puzzle piece. And spoiler, I think it might be the United States map when we're done, but I'm not quite sure yet. So right now she made a picture. We were learning about the immigration of Irish people from Ireland to the United States, the potato famine. So she drew a potato. And then this was for the Civil War. So we were talking about specific battles and she was outlining the Union States and the Confederate States the in-between states who hadn't quite decided yet. So the Union, the Confederate, North, South. In science, she got to label diagrams and learn about insects and different parts of the insect and what makes something an insect and what makes something a bug. So you can see she's covered a lot, something we did for, I believe it was the Westward Expansion. She got to make a quilt unit. So again, for every activity unit we did or section we did, she got to draw a picture of significance of what she learned or something interesting of it. And together, and at the end, we stapled it together and made a quilt. I just put a sticker here in the middle because that's her <laughs> name. But it was really cool and that hangs on our wall. So I know a lot of people um, don't really try for knowledge a lot and I don't understand. It has all these options. And I think it's great, it's a free resource. I think it provides a lot of information, a lot of contextual knowledge. It's not demanding writing wise. It does have writing opportunities within it, but I think it's everything's age appropriate. I love that it's leveled at a specific age. So it's not asking them to write, you know, paragraphs. It's just short summaries and it's giving them prompting of the, you know, step by step of how to write. So that stuff is beginning to happen. One thing I've heard people say about core knowledge is it's not very inclusive. It doesn't have a lot of perspectives. And I think there is, is it the most inclusive thing I've used? No. Is it the only resource I'm using? No, but there are ups and downs to it. So for example, when we were learning about the Civil War, core knowledge was very honest about Abe Lincoln and kind of his portrayal that he wasn't, you know, trying to end slavery for moral grounds. He wasn't against slavery. It was more of a political move, which I think it's important to have those conversations, even at this age, that, you know, painting these hero figures that we really need to paint more three-dimensional pictures of no one's just good or bad. It's everyone has the ability to do those and talking about the actions of people and why they make those decisions are really important. But on the other hand, I really feel like they could have gone more into Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant in the Civil War. So it was a brief kind of painting of these figures, but not really super deep. But there are sections, again, where they go into, when we're talking about immigration now and the land of opportunity, it's brought up in core knowledge that is this really the land of opportunity for everyone when people are still being discriminated against or were discriminated against and currently are still being discriminated against right now because of where the family or their ancestors came from. So it does bring in those elements. It's not as conservative as I think a lot of people are talking about. And I'm a, someone who has used a lot of core knowledge. So I kind of feel like I can speak to this and I'm a very inclusive person and I'm very picky about the resources I use. I think it does a good job. And luckily we cover so many different areas in both history and social justice that where I feel needed areas to add information, 
I can add those pretty easily. And even my seven-year-old can point out when we said the land of opportunity, she kind of she uh, laughs like, well, that's not true for everyone, mom, because we've gone through a lot of social justice. And it's not true for everyone to this day, which is an important lesson to learn. And a lot of people say, you know, they're young. They don't need to learn these things. Yes, they do, because they're foundationally in our country. They're part of our country. They're per currently part of our country, and they affect children. So it's important that our kids learn about this. So I do like Core Knowledge as a resource and she has done really well at it. And again, I told you, even with a struggling reader, because she's had so much background knowledge, she has no issues with reading comprehension because she can pull in so many different information. So the only other area she's doing independently, I will go over group work in a separate video because that is one of my favorite areas to cover. It's also where we cover a lot of subjects together. So she's been doing, and she, I think has one lesson left, has been doing song school Spanish this year, and it's just been her. My older one didn't want to do Spanish this year. She really enjoys this program. She likes the CD, she likes the song, she's that kind of kid. One thing I did to help with retention is that I've been having her make vocabulary flashcards. Again, getting pen to paper really helps with retention. So she will make um, the flashcard and then she'll make a picture on the back. And it's very important, I've learned not to have the picture on the front because then they just associate the picture with that and they're not necessarily remembering it. So she made these, we did the seasons recently. So she makes those. And again, when we're reviewing our all about reading cards every night, we'll review these really quick. And I usually only pull the last two vocab units we've done. When she's mastered it, I put it in the master pile. And then, you know, in a month or so, I will bring those back out to review. Again, learning about memory, retention, learning about what things you can do. Our library also has Mango, uh, and they have Little Pim, which is the kind of younger version of Mango. And it's got little uh, videos of different Spanish lessons and different Spanish cartoons and things like that. So she's been using that. One thing she really enjoys is watching Barbie in Spanish um, on the tablet for her tablet time. She'll watch Barbie in Spanish. So again, just offering her those options, but she really enjoys Spanish. And even this past year, she asked if we could do Spanish every day because before we were just doing it once a week and now we've upped it and done more and we've included that additional review for that retention for her. So that covers all of her main subjects. The only other thing she's been doing is her activities. So this entire past year and during the summer, she has been doing gymnastics and she even leveled up this past year into the next level. And again, it's something she does for fun. She enjoys it. She loves moving her body and her skills have improved. So that is her, you know, chosen activity. I do limit my kids to one activity at a time because I'm not going to go crazy and I don't have the budget to do multiple activities. This past year, she also did our Lego coding class and the kids actually got to go to competition. So there's a whole, there was a Lego director. He taught the kids coding and different Lego techniques and they got to spend the year building their specific storyboard. So kind of think of like Lego Masters, if you ever watch that. They had specific things that they had to have, specific builds, and they had to code the programs and make certain aspects of it move. And the kids even won a special award for their poster board. It was the most creative, I believe, was what they won. But they got a medal and they got a pin and they got a certificate and they had to present it to judges and we had to go to competition. So it was a really great experience, especially for my seven-year-old who is more hesitant to talk in public and quieter. She got to talk about the restaurant she created for her storyboard and it was a gluten-free restaurant, gluten-free restaurant. If you're new to my channel, my seven-year-old has celiac disease, so we are gluten-free for medical reasons. And she got to talk to the judges about that. And it was kind of like a whisper, <laughs> but she was still advocating for herself, but also educating others, which is really important. And it was a really great experience, something we will continue on into next year. And it's definitely opened an area for her um, that she wasn't previously really interested or exposed to. She really loves coding. She loves code.org which is something we discovered with using Core Knowledge, the computer units, which again, we'll talk about more specifically in our group subjects. She also loves Scratch Tuner. She really picks up on coding and she can get like hyper-focused on it and just keep going and keep going until I tell her to stop. But that is um, 
one area that I was not that that is one area I wasn't aware that she would be interested in until she was exposed to it. Now she loves it. So again, kids aren't always don't know what they're into until you expose them or give them an opportunity to try it. So she has been doing wonderful this year. I am very proud of the progress she's made and she continues to do a great job. And it's not like it's perfect. She does have areas that she struggles in, but because of our routines and our consistency, I think it really does help her, especially having the very um, kind of different brain than typical. She has the tools necessary to help her succeed. I have put into place different areas with scheduling, consistency, different ADHD toolbox she has that she is set up to success. And I want to talk about that because I think it's really important that when we talk about consistency and curriculum and it's not always the right thing to change. Sometimes this is the right thing to do. Sometimes sticking to your plan, even when it's hard, you know, when we learn new concepts, it's not always easy. Sometimes it's a struggle and that's okay to get through that struggle. You as the parent are there to help them and she's a prime example of this that she doesn't give up, she doesn't push back on me because we continue on. She knows she does really well because I have set up things in a way that help her brain function the best. But that involves me doing a lot of research and planning and preparing things in a certain way, not changing curriculums back and forth and not dropping things. If you can see, we added things throughout the year because of that consistency and that scheduling, they could take on more. So she had a wonderful year, benefited from all the things we went over. And if you have any specific questions about the things I talked about in her video, leave them in the comments below. And if not, thank you for watching.